dress with Paul and Patrick and Little Snow White 90210, which that bitch is everywhere. Hey, undressed bitches. I'm excited because we've got another fun guest in the pull at two Beverly Hills Boutique today. Uh, she is a music artist. but not She's just, a singer. But she's had top 10 hits. She's and a billboard. She's song. a dancer. And she's got a new song coming out with Olivia Newton-John's daughter, Chloe Latanza. I hope I'm not butchering her name. She's a performer. Exactly. Kendra Erica. <laughs> she's an entertainer extraordinaire. Hello. Wow. That was such a fervent and warm welcome. Did I, I get it right? I feel it. <laughs> I, I hope so. It's it was from her heart. It's coursing through my veins. I oh love my it. God. Thanks. That's your next song. Coursing through my, my veins, baby. Through through coursing my through my oh. veins. I, I love I it. I hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So Kendra, how did you get into music? Wait, is this going to be about her or is it going to be how I can audition to be on her music video? So Kendra, how did you get into music? <laughs> I well, guess it's about we'll you, talk, Kendra. We'll talk in a bit. Okay, okay. We'll talk in a bit. He can't sing. I don't want to be. He can't sing, so he can't be. I mean, if you want to put him in your music video with him not singing, then that's good. But just because I can't sing doesn't mean I don't know how to dance. I can gyrate. I can but if you twirl. want somebody shirtless in your music video, that would be me. Oh, my God. <laughs> You well, see? well, you guys come as, as, a, as a package, so yes. I'm going to have to... Figure it out. Don't be the one with to, clothes on. I'll be the half-naked one. I'm going to okay. have to <laughs> utilize your talents and then utilize your talents. There so. you go. <laughs> I totally want to do it. I want to be in a music video. It's been a while since I was in a music video. I was in several. You have been. You're in several. Yes. Okay. So yes. you're just... They were number one, too. You're just listing all your testimonials right now to get the job, I guess. I do! <laughs> Do I have to sit on your side of the couch? I mean, seriously. Oh, my God. Okay, Kendra, how did you get started in music? My first question. I, for, well, when I, was, when I was born, I was born tone deaf. Really? That's me yeah. now. <laughs> it's, it's very, it's very over, overcomable. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. Um, but I, I always wanted to perform. I always wanted to sing. My parents sat me in front of the Disney movies, and I saw all those you know, musical numbers yeah. and them just performing and creating a, a world for themselves. And something drew me to that. Okay. And I, but I was tone deaf and I had all the, I had all the skills and all the confidence, but, but not the technique and not the, not the um, vocal, the vocals. Okay. So I started, I was introduced to a professional German opera singer who then laid a foundation for me because I was at such a young age. I was eight years old. Your brain is like a sponge. Yeah. So I absorbed all of that technique and all of that training and it really set a great foundation for me to build upon. So this sounds like my life story. You can't sing Paul. Except I <laughs> haven't gotten to that stage yet. Okay, Paul, now that we know you are tone deaf, this might be I hope a, for you after all. There, there is hope for me. But you know what? Yes. I don't think I'm tone deaf. You say I'm tone deaf. And I don't even know if you know what tone deaf is. You were on American Idol for being a bad singer. <laughs> I was on. That's tone deaf. I was on, though. <laughs> I'm too sexy for my body. Oh my too God. sexy for my body. Right, right said Paul. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows Fred? Nobody knows Fred. Oh <laughs> Who's Fred? Everybody knows Paul. Who's Fred? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> How many songs have you done? How many do you have out? Like, I I've put out a bunch of singles, and okay. I've had five top ten hits on the Billboard Dance Chart. One of them went to That's number fantastic. one, and that was a remake of Laura Brown against Self Control. Oh, so okay. I, I love wait, that. I, Self Control. Oh, yes. How does that go? Oh, the night. Is my world Love that song. city light painted girl Love in it. the day? Nothing matters. I can do this, it yes, but you can't take sing. Self control. <laughs> She's gonna be the singer. I'm not gonna take her position. So, just when you're like, on the first of all, how do you get on the yeah billboard charts? I'm always, I'm not very versed in the music. How industry, much did you have so to I'm pay, or like what's what's you know. Well, I was introduced <laughs> to my my Billboard promoter Jason Dowman okay. through a an artist development firm out of New York that I was working with in back in 2015, 2016 and I was working with their group of writers and we nothing was sticking, nothing was coming to fruition, just uh. no, nothing was really jiving. Yeah. And 
he just said, why don't you come out and work with my collaborators and my creatives out here in L.A.? And then that's what started my whole back and forth from Florida to, to LA. L.A. To L.A., okay. And for eight years, I was back and forth, back and forth. I would be here once, maybe twice a month. And then in March of 2020, I was geared up to move out here. And then we had that little blip in the world. COVID! Yeah. <laughs> so, and I just thought it was wiser to be to stay back in in florida with my with my family and ride out that that global yeah uh, whatever know, it was speaking of yeah. covid yes. you wrote a song right you did a song during covid that was a top hit yeah um you did. yeah tell them the name of the song what's the song well i, I, if I i'm getting I it right wrote, i think i'm getting it right but i well to keep the momentum going yeah. because i wasn't going to stop just because the world stopped yeah um my world didn't stop but I was able to, via Zoom and via the technology, I was able to still write and record music. So I wrote Song of Hope mm -hmm. with oh, okay. uh, Charlie Midnight and Jan Fairchild. Uh, and then I also did, I also wrote So Fly, okay. which um, charted on, on Billboard as well. Nice. And I, and I, put out another song called avalanche okay <laughs> i don't have any songs on billboard thank god uh, um <laughs> song of hope what was the inspiration behind that story it was uh, well, because the world was in a depressing place when you wrote that song yeah so i wanted to i wanted to musically reach out to people okay. and be like this is a song of hope this let's band together and let's it, and it was just that it was that sort of we are the world yeah but you know just can, can, but on, on a lower a bit? on a lower on okay. a lower scale because michael jackson is is like of course you know the he, king of pop it's grandiose. never a he lower takes, scale he, ta he takes the 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 gold for that of the course. platinum for that yeah of course but i sing some of it i want to i want to hear it uh there was a noise from somewhere deep we heard the sound it was bittersweet People calling out from an aching heart, getting so much closer by saying a part, singing a song of hope. I like I it. You know, your voice really love it. brings a lot of emotions to me. Yeah, it does. Um, and that's what I usually like when I hear an artist. I don't. I never remember the words. I never, never remembered the songs. Never. I love them to death because I can sing and dance. Pulled yeah. towards the tone. Yeah. But okay. I I get so emotionally connected to the music and their voice. Oh. Well, and aren't that, your most hits like pop dance music? Like dance music is where your most hits are. Yes. Because I love dance music. Uh, I, as <laughs> as do I. I, yeah. I. I just on the drive over here, I was like bopping. <laughs> I was like. Top like windows down. Let's go. Yeah. Um. But yeah. But I, because I've had that that classical training, mm -hmm. there there is I want to say a level of depth there. Yeah. And that's inarguable. And that's me not tooting my own horn, but just speeding speaking matter of factly about my ability honey yeah. this is your platform yeah of uh, toot your yeah. own horn you're on the <laughs> billboard <laughs> charts yes. i'm not nobody <laughs> is i mean how many of us can really say that we're on that list and it's something that you wanted to do so yes. kudos to you that you can land anywhere on a chart yeah. that you've wanted we'll to, get you to on do a, we'll get you on a video well <laughs> i want to be on a video <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what's your favorite song to date that you've done how do you ask that question? It's like people asking me, which, which is your favorite gown? I'm like the one that made the most money. Which is your I'm favorite? Like <laughs> okay, let me rephrase the question. Yeah. Which is your favorite gown that you made? All of them. <laughs> okay, what's your favorite song? Don't listen to him. I'm going to have to go with the, with the Paul approach. No, you right? got to pick one. You got to pick can't. one song that you think made the most impact and was the greatest thing you've ever written. And done. Okay, that's different because if you're talking about impact, which one do you feel resonated with a bigger audience that really connected? Avalanche seems to be the tearjerker. God, Avalanche. You that was during COVID too? 
that was during COVID too. We shot both the SoFly and Avalanche videos within two or three days in Las Vegas in July and like the dead of the, the dead of the summer. Yeah. And during COVID during, during COVID. And when we shot the Avalanche video there, we had this ice sculpted piano Wow. And because in the middle of the desert, like a life size. Wait, wait, in the middle of the desert, not in the middle of the oh, desert, like, in a in a controlled air conditioned got studio. It. But that's cool. But we had a we had a certain a lot of time to shoot this because one, the heat was gonna melt the melt the, the mofo. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. <laughs> and 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 two, uh, it was it was cold to to sit on my. My ass got numb. It's uh, funny. <laughs> on a cold, on By the way, on Kendrick, start block. drinking your coffee because okay. he's going to do your Armenian coffee reading at the end. Yeah, if you start okay. jittering so, during, yeah, don't worry about okay. it. It's fine. You'll be so, fine. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to jitter. If you have no, the shakes, okay. if you have any of those <laughs> situations, don't worry. 911. Don't listen okay. to them. You'll be fine. They're cute. The it's Hills like a PD. chocolatey flavor. It's kind of velvety. It's very it's velvety. Okay. Okay. It is. It's really Hold on. I don't want Ah, you're fine. Yeah. Um... How you've done? What do you think could happen to you drinking? No, I'm just, just a caffeine. Little, so I've, I'm caffeine sensitive. I actually, I went to the, I, I went to the then ER don't do one. It. I, w- I went to the ER one time for having an espresso. Then don't do yeah, it. So uh, that's why. Don't do it. That's <laughs> okay. fine. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> no coffee reading. Sorry, guys. I don't. I don't <laughs> contribute to the worldwide caffeine <laughs> addiction problem. <laughs> Not a problem. We're just going to talk behind her back when she leaves. <laughs> Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Oh, God. <laughs> Let me remind everybody they can get their copy reading at pullatu.com. P-O-L-A-T-T-E-U.com, bitch. <laughs> bitch. <laughs> um, when did you come to L.A.? When did you move to L.A. officially? I moved here officially October of 2022. Okay. So right after COVID ended, right, basically. Right, right after it ended and when the, when the city was starting to get back on its feet mm-hmm. and and get back to a sense of of movement but Got why it. not in florida i mean you could do your music from anywhere why do you have to be in la well in in florida there aren't a lot of musical outlets uh, i mean miami caters more towards the latino market and the heavy hip-hop market oh, oh i sure. see what you mean um yeah. so and i mean i don't really represent well that. dance music you need to be in la dance music basically or vegas either um dance music either yeah la nashville or um or, or vegas okay. uh and i and i say nashville because i recorded thriller killer another another one that that that's been you know uh, a beast mm-hmm. i recorded that one in nashville and okay. i've done uh, a couple others a couple other dance tracks out of nashville too so got it and what's great about nashville is that it's not just it's not all country. It's uh, like many people, fl- so many other types of artists flock there to, to, um, well, it's a great creative place to be able yes. to do music and all sorts of music. Yes. So, not so, just so one specific right. type of music. So it's interesting you say that it's not country because I always think of Nashville as all country, country, basically. Yeah. But, but it's, it's not. Like, like Paul said, it's like, yeah. it's that, it's that environment yeah. that everyone wants to like feast on yeah. And, yeah. and get. And it's like and the housewives are all here in LA because <laughs> they're all tearing each other's weaves as up and down <laughs> the street. <laughs> yes. And yeah. then the music is oh, in is that Nashville. What I was seeing on the, on the street. Yeah. I, was yeah. Like, I was like, is that, is that road? Kill no, that's someone's no, that's weed. that's someone's yeah. weed. No. Yeah, it's a housewife. It's a housewife's <laughs> weed. <laughs> they that's just left hilarious. the red carpet. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Um, you started this uh, a song that you're doing with Olivia Newton John's daughter. Yes. Chloe Latanza. Is that am I saying? Latanzi. Right? Latanzi. How'd yeah. you meet? Through uh, Dave Auday. I D- Dave Auday had remixed Sublime, another Billboard uh, charter that I did. Okay. And. That's not a flex, by the way. That's not. Oh, the beach, <laughs> the beach is that way. That's not a flex at all. Oh, that was just another one. The I beach another chart to talk. Another chart. Ta- ta- the beach is that way. Bring, bring your, bring your shovel and your, and your, and your pail. Yeah. That's funny. And yeah, um, and your mermaid tail. I'll do that. That's my job. Uh, but I, I, Dave and I always wanted to do a, a collaboration directly, mm-hmm. and he's the one that brought on chloe to the to the mix okay. so she so sings she sings yes. so i never knew she sang 
Yeah. I never knew that. Well, if your mom yeah. sings, you would think you could sing. I mean, my yeah. mom sang like I a little know, butterfly. You, you got to bring that Xanadu money. I mean, there let's you go. go. Right? <laughs> and she did. I she think did. she has that Xanadu money. Yeah. I think she, <laughs> yeah, I, th- well, I think she does too. <laughs> oh my God. So what's the song you're doing with Clay? It's called Self Love Symphony. And it's, it's an, it's a song about finding finding your own innate power again Mm -hmm. after your boundaries have been 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 crossed and put into question okay and it's that it's that rebuilding song so who wrote it both of us did and and both of you wrote it and also lauren dyson who's written for bts for years so and dave produced it so how does one go about writing a song you just get together and then you just start throwing words out and saying oh that's i mean i'm i've always cur- cared i love that. you you love me we're one big happy family da, 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 da. that's no. the barney song yeah, oh my god <laughs> he's literally <laughs> wrote, singing eh? the barney song we how about our- <laughs> this one instead roses are red violets are blue god made me gorgeous what happened to you oh, bitch honey <laughs> Oh, See, I put think some melody else, to that. Somebody I else. could sing. I could rap. Somebody Roses else. are red, violets are blue. God made me gorgeous. What happened to you? We got we, we the best song. music. Oh another one. That's right. <laughs> Bust a move. Oh my god. Seriously. Yeah. Okay. I Thank lo- you. Uh, and, uh, listen, I love <coughs> music. He does. So do I. Even though he I can't we sing, have, love we have that in common. Music. Now. I, I've gone through life doing everything I've always wanted to do yeah. and been able to accomplish very well for anything I wanted to do. Singing is one of the things I love so much. I sing in the car. I sing in the shower. I sing while I um, like all day long. If there's no music, I don't feel alive. You, you don't have that like that that lifeline that, that. No, I feel so connected when yeah. the music has to blare. It has to be really energetic and it just sets a standard and a tone but it also has to the song uh, for me you have to have the feeling in it like yes. you know what the artist was thinking when they wrote yeah. that song yes in, in order to truly connect yeah yeah and do you write all your own music mostly or no mostly aside from the covers that i've done like self-control and yeah. i did a cover of try again um Aaliyah's try again mm-hmm. And I did a, a duet with Constantine Maroulis, uh, a, a, a song from Wicked, As Long As You're Mine. We did a dance, oh, yeah. a da- a dance re- remake of that when, when Broadway was resurging after oh. the pandemic. So and what's the process for that? Do you, there's got to be like a whole process to get clearance and licensing and all. Like it's got to be a fucking nightmare. There, there, is, <laughs> there, there is a process in which I have team members that I delegate to and okay. that, that I call upon to do such tasks. I love it. <laughs> She's not flexing there either. I got Snow White. <laughs> she helps me sew all the dresses. That's all I got. Um, so do, you, do you do a music video for every one of your songs? I try to, yes. Okay. Yeah, some, some, some I do lyric videos for, but in that case, I just do a, a bomb-ass photo shoot and I just... And you run the lyrics. Basically. Wait, the explain lyrics. explain the difference because I don't know, or nor do, does the audience maybe. Because what's a lyric video? Everybody knows what a lyric video. What's is. a, li- a video? lyric video? Is a video of the just lyrics shows the words in 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 very um in very neat in in stylistic graphic form. Yeah, like the the lyrics just pop in and out. Oh, so you mean you see the words? It's essentially a cheap yeah. way to make a music video. Pretty much. I want to see the movements. <laughs> I want to see the dance. I want right? to see the is colors. It, is I, it I do too, which is, which is why, which is why I'm always, I'm always down for and pushing to do a, make a music video. Make yeah. a music video. Is it not a remember. cheaper way though to make a music video? It, it is. Yeah. It is. Um, but maybe not every song needs. A, it's the, um, it's the, the theatrics. Economical consideration. But do you yeah. also think a lyric video is important because then people can learn the lyrics and sing with it and. Because yes. everyone goes to YouTube for that, right? Yes, I mean, and I even when I do do uh, an, an, uh, like like a full music video, a, a full music video, yeah. I'll also pair it with a lyric, a lyric video, video so oh. that people can Interesting. check See, out the messaging. Let me tell you something that excites me because when I hear the song, when I listen to the words. I never really know what the words are until yeah. I see them on paper or I see them spelled out because a lot of everybody has a different way of being able to sound out the words. Yeah. And I'm a visual learner. 
as when I see it, that's the only way I'm going to learn it. Yeah. Yeah. So I like that. What, Cheaper what, otherwise. What's your, okay, the first time you were in the car and you heard yourself on the radio, what was your reaction? <laughs> I was like, hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what song, do you remember what song it was and when? It was, it was Self Control. Okay. And I, I forget where, where I was because when those, when those like serendipitous ha like moments happen, you're just like. You're sent. You're for transported. A, yeah. You're, tra you're sent for a. You're like a you can't even moment. believe it's real. Yeah, you're you're just in this um, in this uh, state of like, yeah, is this is this real or not? And but I do remember the the feeling that I got and it yeah. was it was like. You know, it's I'm interesting that he's asking you this question, but yeah. he's never asked me that question. What do you about mean? about your your songs. When I first when my first dress ever walked. On television, it was on Star Search with Ed McMahon. They've already asked you this question. You've answered it a million times. What I, I don't need say? to ask you. What I say? When I saw the dress walk down on Star Search, I got a butterflies in my stomach because I knew I made something so special that the world could see. I can't believe he remembers what I said. Of course, I fucking remember. We've been Babe. together for twenty years, and I've only heard that oh story repeated a hundred times. That's when you know <laughs> that you guys have such a special bond. How come I didn't think that you remember? <laughs> Bitch, you thought you were gonna catch me, and I, I didn't was. know. <laughs> because I have to say that your feeling about being transported and the surreal and even though you know and even if they tell you oh yeah. it's going to be playing on this radio at this time and it's going to play five times today and it's going to like even if they give you the guideline and you're sitting there next to the radio yeah. the minute it hits and you hear All your those voice go yeah. out the window. and there's yeah. something <laughs> just comes over you and i think that's exactly. like such a beautiful feeling yeah it is and it just keeps you going and there's there's a state of um, this is th this is working. Let's keep cl climbing onward and There's upward. no way yeah. that you ever yeah. forget those moments, even though you may have one every single day of every single week. Uh, That's true. It's, it's amazing. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. How do you keep yourself grounded in this industry? Why should she? <laughs> Why should She's she? got publicists okay. sitting over here. here. Go. She's got team. <laughs> She's got entourage. Well, here's my <laughs> here's my theory about being grounded. Okay. When a tree is rooted, its leaves are, the foliage is more colorful. It's more vibrant. Okay. It has, it yes. shows more life and it attracts more opportunities and more, more birds or more, more um, other aspects to it. Yeah. But when a tree is uprooted, the leaves die. Hmm. So when people become uprooted, yeah. their leaves die. They don't have a soul anymore. They don't have a sense of of attraction. The law of attraction does not apply if you're uprooted. But if you are rooted, the law of attraction applies. So you want to stay connected to and be the foliage for everyone that is with you, surrounding you and supporting you. Yes. And it's it's so important to to keep the people that have been there through the the developmental stages yeah. close to you and to and to honor those those people because those are the people that will be there for more developmental stages in in your future so it's really important to to stay to stay grounded um and because karma can Karma can come to those that have been. Uploaded. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah. Definitely. It definitely does. Yeah. Are you the only one in your family that's musical? Yes, I am. How is that? Because that doesn't <laughs> make sense to me because isn't it usually it's I think handed down through. I think it may have skipped generations. <laughs> OK, but I but my 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 grandmother, when she was living in Germany, she was she was involved in in choir and in, mm -hmm. you know, other performance I, she she was very vague about it, but I c I could just tell that she she was a performer uh, um, at at heart. Yeah. Um. But both of my parents, um, my dad's an attorney, and my mom's a consummate businesswoman. She's a commercial realtor in Boca Raton, Florida. So yeah. And she's uh, both are very successful. But so totally out of the music business. Totally out out of the music business, but my mom has been so instrumental in 
my music career and she has that business sense about her mm -hmm. so if anybody in this industry has ever tried to or will try to circumvent me good luck <laughs> <laughs> that's good that you got your mom there like yes <laughs> backing you up and yes and that's good i like that i think it's important because it's something that even if you have an innate talent for that you trusted yourself mm -hmm. and went for something that is very difficult to yeah. succeed in yeah and but the fact that you every single day do the work to be able to stay in the business yeah that's work yeah it it's um i don't really call it maintaining i call it i call it thriving you have to keep like on, you have to keep thriving i mean like you but you love it you, yes. I, I mean could you could you stop doing could you ever see yourself oh i'm not going to sing anymore i'm going to do real estate my mom has a good business <laughs> I, i'm just going to go sell real estate like you'd be singing the whole time you're selling real estate you're probably making yeah. songs for the house three bathrooms five bedrooms <laughs> like you know like That's you funny. cannot leave it because it's something that i think flows through you yes it does flow through me but i i would be lying if i said i in in this journey that I've been on, because uh, every every entrepreneur goes through goes through these ups these, and high, downs, these sure. ups and downs, and and I've I've had those thoughts of okay, what if should I step back? Should I just push it aside? Should I put push it on the back burner? And I just I kept my my dad's um, my dad's like almost proverb uh, so so resonant within me, and that's. And that's uh, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Oh, I like that. Oh, that's say true. it again. Hard work beats hard talent. Hard work beats, beats talent, talent when talent doesn't work hard. When yeah. talent doesn't. Oh, which means you, you can't. Which means you have to work hard for it. It shouldn't just be handed to you. And Pre I love that. Precisely. That's a. Yes. I mean, I love that. That's a great. Is that what I'm doing wrong? Oh, and shut up. Well, even <laughs> even my mom, she made a deal with me when I first graduated high school. I mm -hmm. was like, I'm going to go to L.A. or New York and I'm going to do the whole Disney and Nickelodeon <laughs> thing. And I'm so happy I didn't because look what's happening. Yeah. Look at the documentary, documentary that came out. I saw it. Ooh. So <laughs> what's I would have. With Drake. We know Drake Bell. He's our friend. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, quiet on the sets. Hello. Yeah. So I didn't. <sighs> so my mom. He's married. My mom had He's that, had that insight. My mom had that insight and she. She was like, and and I'm so thankful by the grace of God that I'm not a, another statistic. Right. Um, and she she said, I will still support your music career, but you're going to go to college and get a degree in something else other than music. So what was What's your, your degree? degree? Uh, communications, broadcast journalism, and international business. Oh, that's what I did. <laughs> international business with psychology. Yeah. With psychology. <laughs> yeah, I needed help. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Lots I need help. of help. I'm Armenian. Oh my god! I, I need help. Lots of yeah, help. I'm Armenian. Armenians <laughs> are badass. Yeah, I'm Armenian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody told me I was a badass. Oh well, here yeah. I am. They forgot. Here I am telling they you. They forgot. They sold me short. <laughs> Is there any song that you've done that you just like? Mm -hmm. I don't like the way that came out. I wish I could have changed this. I wish I could have done this differently. Hmm. I wish I could have added something into this. Huh. Good question, right? It's a, it's a great question and one that'll take maybe two days to answer. <laughs> I don't think it's about trying to change it. I think you always want to improve on something you did. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. you're always challenging yourself to be able to come up with something that's a fresh new variation of. Something that's And innovative. after a few yeah. months, because it doesn't take three seconds to do it. Oh, probably it does for her. It's mm -hmm. like me making gowns. I'm like, oh, I just did that this afternoon. They're like, what the fuck? I'm like, because it just True. becomes effortless. So yeah. it's probably like that. And then you hear it on the radio and you're like, oh, you know what? I should have went with the higher note. That, But that's just improving upon what's already beautiful. And we're constantly evolving. Yes. yes. So not so much that you want to change it because it's not good. I mean, there, there are songs that I did uh, a few years ago, like 2015, 2016, that I, I really want to revamp and like re remaster and restylize. Yeah. Because I've evolved as a vocalist. I mean, I hear myself and I'm like, ooh, I'm like, those vocals sound a little bit Karen Walker to me. I, I like I have a deeper, a deeper, I have depth now in mm -hmm. my voice that I want to showcase and I want to 
uh, apply and implore onto that onto that song to really elevate it to the place that I want it to be at right yeah. now. Yeah. And do you play any instruments? Any music? I instruments? used to play piano. Okay. Um, what happened to the ice piano? It melted. It, it, mel- it melted. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. I, I used to play a little piano. Um, I I didn't quite get into music theory. Just music theory, and I just did not connect. It was like it was like Mandarin to mm-hmm. trying to understand Mandarin to me. I then started playing by ear, which is how I wrote some of my my earlier stuff. Um, I tried guitar, but I didn't like getting the calluses, so I was. <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> I, 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 Paul, I know, I know. Uh, Every so time I thread that needle, I'm like, where are my uh, uh, thimbles? Because look at my nails. I mean, my I know. <laughs> they got to look pretty. Like, yeah, it, it was like, um, it was like Gone with the Wind, Scarlett O'Hara, where, yeah. uh, where Rhett Butler looks at her hands and she's like, he's like, these aren't the hands of a woman, you know? <laughs> <laughs> now, have you gone on tour? I, I've been on, I've been on club tours okay. before. Explain what a club tour is for yeah, people what's that a don't club know what tour? that is. A cl- when you put out a single, okay. you you touch you touch bases on different on different major cities and different clubs that have that are supporting your record and So that what are. club would it be in LA? Um, Where do I've, we go? Well, I've performed at uh, Whiskey Go Go before. Okay. I've oh. performed at Avalon uh, many times. Okay. The Vermont um, Stash. Okay. And I now I have a residency at Sir in West Hollywood. Oh, you do? I, I do. love that. Every Tuesday I'm at Sir. Oh, that's West fun. Hollywood. That's yeah. very cool. Okay. So, did you meet Lisa? I have not met LVP yet. Oh. I have not. Uh, but I did. You talk to Peter then? I've talked to Peter. <laughs> I talked to Peter. We've had Peter Madrigal. Everyone. Yeah, we've had a couple of conversations here and there. He's great. Sweet guy. Yes, very nice very guy. friendly. Um, and also very, very swole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that working, that working out is paying off. Yes, um, definitely. Yeah. I'm He's not, a big guy. I'm not flirting with you, Peter. Just. Are just you dating saying. anyone now? Uh, no. Oh, you're single. Why are you single? She needs to be single. I'm she's. Curious. I always ask people. Why she's doing single. her craft. You think it's just because you're so focused on. Jordan's available. Miguel's available oh over God. there. They're straight. Um. I, or so they say, but I don't know. I am selective about okay. who I let I into. I was too until I saw him and then everything went out the window. Exactly. I'm selective about who I invite into my energy field and, and went with that being said into my sexual energy field because that's as soon as that's an energy transfusion. And okay. you need to be very careful about who you're exchanging that And with. were you in a relation? Have you been in a relationship mm. before? Yeah. Yeah, I have. And what's your longest? How long? Three years. Oh. Three years. And it just didn't work out. No. Well. Did the sex fizzle out? No, it's (laughs) it's just we we grew in different directions. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was coming out here a lot a lot more, and he was he was back in Florida, and there there are just these natural insecurities that started to creep into to his mind, which then crept into the relationship. Mm. So. Interesting. That's why he puts a leash on me. <laughs> I like a very it. Very short leash. I like it. Mm. <laughs> I have to say. You just like the collar. <laughs> when, he takes the, <laughs> when he takes the leash off, I'm like a lost puppy. I'm like, what my owner? Oh what my, my owner? <laughs> where, where my owner? You cannot say that on our fucking podcast. Where my owner? Where my own, are you kidding You're me? My, you are my owner. Please, a, no. Take me, take me to your say that. Not even as a joke. Take oh my me God. to your leader. <laughs> Why? I don't mind it. Uh, I like it, actually. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No. No. Uh, no. 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 I'm a Snow Snow White is just like I know she's just chilling like she's a villain. She's just chilling. Have she's you been to the Grammys yet? I've been uh, the last time I was at the Grammys was in 2019. How was that? COVID. It, it was it was great. It was a fun experience. Um I yeah, I Being with your peers, seeing people. Who I, who did you want to meet? Who did you see? Well, I met Bibi Rexa. Oh, she fun. she was very lovely. Mm-hmm. Um we I, stayed at the same hotel room. Yeah. I met Megan Trainer, who was also very lovely. Um, I tried to get a photo with Nick Jonas, but he was kind of persnickety about it. Oh. And had his body. What? Go- and, and Wait, tell us that story. What happened with Nick a, Jonas? I, I wanted to just shake his hand and be like, hi, Nick. Yeah. Like, very professionally. Sure. 
and he just like gave the the nod to his security guy and this in this like this big buff black guy just like intersect in, 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 intercepted oh wow yeah. i don't you think that's kind of shitty like i mean it is when when people want to take pictures with us and like oh we saw you on tv we're listening to you on the radio I'm cool. I don't care what we're doing. We'll stop and we'll take a photo but with But especially people. at yeah. the Grammys, you think you're with your peers. You're yeah. in a safe space. Yeah. and I, You're not like a crazy fan. No. And I was just trying to be like professional and be like, yo, what's up? Right, right, right. <laughs> just very low key, chill. Not, I'm, I'm not here to ask for your... To, Did you to, expect that? No, no. I wasn't. I, wasn't I wouldn't ex- expect expecting that. that. But yeah. like what... what Who was what, he what? with though? Um, he was just like stand. He was just by the uh, by like the the bar. So that's even worse. He's just I, hanging out, like you're like, hanging yeah, out. Yeah, I was in I was in the VIP the yeah. VIP lounge. Um, but I I will say that when it comes to you know artists and and their fans, I mean you have to be ingratiating. Right. It's part of the job. Of course. Because we as as artists. But you're doing it for them. They're they're feeding into your energy too. Exactly. Yeah. And as artists, we we were chosen to be extraordinary. Yeah. And if you if you then allowed like the stress or this or that to get to you and then you end up disrespecting or dishonoring a fan, right. then you're just like the rest then you're just But like you're an artist. Else. But you're yourself. not even a fan. You are a fan, but you are I, an artist yes, at the gr- attending the Grammys. It's like it's I know. you know what I mean? It's I, I'm it's not like you're like in like I'm right a thousand. There with you. It's like when we met Britney Spears. Oh my God, that was a nightmare. She's not the nicest person. Um. Well, she wasn't <laughs> in a good space. Yeah. There when was is six she? of us in the VIP when room. Is she? She's got a stripper pole in her bedroom. We, it yeah. was six <laughs> of us in the VIP room. Okay. And one of our friends had done a portrait of her yeah. and wanted to present it to her. And she was sitting, sitting on the couch with us and we're hanging out. Yeah. She, you know, didn't really care for snow white because she just wasn't she wasn't herself and i understood and it was fine and but we were still chatting a little bit and then when she presented it and she made the bodyguard do the same thing yeah and it made our friend literally cry Cry. and he's a pretty well-known artist i mean you know does pop art and i mean when i saw that i was like Oh my God! How do you make somebody cry? We're but it, six but of it's us in literally a room. we are celebrities in the VIP room with you, bitch. Like it's like we're all there in the VIP room backstage, and it's not that big of a space. Yeah. Like we're just sitting next to each other yeah. on on three little couches. Yeah, it's and it just seemed really, really bad. And then she went into the car. Yeah. Then we left after what we were doing was finished. Yeah, and I saw her car outside, and she was sitting in the car, and I go, "That was not cool, Brittany." Not cool. <laughs> not cool, Brittany. Not cool. Not funny. cool. And you, I walked away. You pulled a pretty woman on her. That was a big mistake. Huge. Yeah. Um, I was, in, because it I was in here night. the other day with my short shorts <laughs> and, and thigh highs, and you did not wait on me. Big mistake. I mean, if, if the only thing she had to do was say thank you. Yeah. And that was it. Made someone's day. Yeah. But to kind of yeah. diss them and yeah. disrespect yeah. their now art. That he remembers that forever. Yeah. And he's... You know, he loves the music still. He still, you know, loves Britney. Mm-hmm. But it taints it for you. It because does, it someone does like an it. idol of yours that you got to meet yeah. kind of crushed it a little bit. And it's just, ugh. Well, yeah, that's w- that, and that goes back to what I was saying. Like, we were chosen to be extraordinary. So, like, the every the everyday um, <coughs> average vibrational person mm-hmm. allows for elements to, uh, uh, like, outside elements to affect them. Yeah. But we as uh, we as artists I could agree with that. We we have we we have a responsibility. It's like you don't want to see you don't want to see Catwoman or Wonder Woman breaking down while they're saving the world. Yeah. You don't want to see that. No, you don't. So that's why you have That's to why they say that. sometimes you should not meet your heroes. Yeah. <laughs> Although everybody we've met in the industry has been very lovely. I got judgmentalized. Yeah. They know uh, not to cross well. these lines. Oh, you, you, you've got um. There has been some nightmares though. Don't I have judgmentalized? Uh, I do. What, uh, is it like the the Ramona eyes or the Shannon Bedore eyes, <laughs> judgy eyes, like judgy, judgy eyes? No, honey. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, theirs is just television quality. Mine is real. <laughs> oh my god. Theirs is just television. Mine is real. You would don't you do cross TV, this. Kendra? Would you do on a, a of reality Of course she show? would. would Why wouldn't she? I would. Yeah. 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 She's do you act as well or just music? I do. I do act. I filmed a I filmed a pilot a few months ago in Florida with a content creator a friend of mine, Sierra DiPaggio. He uh-huh. put out uh, a movie called The Mob King, which has done 
super successfully well. Okay. Um, all across film festivals, internationally and nationally. Nice. Um, and he has a new film out called Silent Partners. I just went to the premiere at the at the uh, Golden State Film Festival okay. back in February. Yep. And we filmed a, a pilot for a project called The Cherry Picker. Okay. Cherry Picker. What's that? It's it's about You're a gonna pick cherries. Yes, okay. Mar- maraschino. Yeah, oh, maraschino. Okay. And we and we, oh. we have to like suck the pits out of them. Yeah, oh. that, that's the whole concept of the film. I'm just kidding. Oh, I was gonna I say think I she's like not telling I, us the and truth. Then we I got kind of got stuck at the sucking part. Uh, so did I. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, okay, I yeah. like this. You I'm had me it. at the sucking. I'm into it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's it's about a a, ho- a a Hollywood executive who's essentially a, a slime ball a, a scammer okay and he and he's known for cherry picking and cherry picking ideas until one day um uh, you know that that business mortality meets him in the face and this big dude played by um rafael C- castillo mm-hmm. uh, knocks at his door and says yo you stole my you stole my idea and oh, they have this wow. this whole gunpoint um altercation and who do you play in it and i play the edm pop star girlfriend of this wonderful slime ball oh, fun. so wow <laughs> very very cool she's very well connected to the mafia <laughs> <laughs> she's so, so connected oh yeah. my god so connected so I play that that role. Well, we got to see you perform when Paul and I were the hosts of Charmaine Blake's eighth annual Oscar yeah, Gala, was which in was my, a huge smash hit. In my Goldfinger outfit. Yes. <laughs> um, and I thought you were fun on stage. I really did. Oh, well, thank I you. I really thought you were fun on stage. She was entertaining the crowd. Yeah, it was fun. I, I, I would definitely go I see gotta, you in concert. I got to bring it. Yeah. That's what I got to do. She was, she was ready. She was like, uh, let's go. So do you put out albums or singles? Singles for now. Okay. And then the album is in the works. Okay. Why do they still call it an album when it's a CD? Because an album is like an album album, like a 12-inch album or 16-inch. What was that? That'd, the round thing. That'd be vinyl. 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 Yeah. Oh, that's vinyl. That's yeah, vinyl but on the record player. Yes. Yes. But they're yes. bringing vinyl back. How they do you are. think? Of, what do you think about that? Would you do it? I think it's. I think it's in. And get the static in the background because I love that static. <laughs> I do too. I think there's something special about that static. There, there's a, um, there's a sentimentality about that. Yeah. Like bringing it back because it's, you can hear you. You you can just hear the the music more clearly, and you can the depth uh, you connect the, to it differently. The layers the and the depths and the as- aesthetic. That's what I meant right. about the static. It's the, just the I here's what I love about vinyl, yeah. though, and what I love about records. There's nothing more symbolic and just reminding me of my childhood when you're opening up a record and you're taking the record out the and smell, you're, you're, the you you know and you put it on the yeah. on the the record play i mean it's just there's nothing like it it's called itunes bitch it's okay one, well. press the button <laughs> it's it's one of a kind yeah which is something that i'm a big a big advocate for is being one of a kind so that's I like vi- that. that's what vinyl is for for me musically so would you do vinyl yeah okay but you haven't done it yet haven't done it yet okay uh but yeah. because if, when you get like 10 million uh, views or how does it work, yeah. they still give you one of those album things, record things. They do. Yeah. So that's still the framework. That's not it changed. Is. It didn't become a CD. It didn't become oh yeah. iTunes. It, it, yeah. it doesn't it's become like that. It is. It's the, still the, 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 the framework of the of the original. Yeah. The um, acknowledgement that you get is that. Yeah. Of the original um, like hard. Uh, hard representation yeah. or hard like documentation of yep. of your of your song i actually have for self control i have a i have a whole plaque oh I wow have, that's kind of cool i have two of them one is hanging in my parents house and then the other one is hanging also in my parents house and is that because <laughs> it was on billboard charts <laughs> yes so what do they do they take a record like and they put the name of the song and then they frame it the, sign it. The name of the song, okay. the the writers, the year it came out, all of the how cool is that? That is cool. all of those. That's like uh, archives. In, all all those important details. Yeah, that's yeah. so cool. I love that. I want to have a record. <laughs> oh God, you got to sing first. Well, well, you, you know what? Everybody else can featured? sing. There's called what is that thing called when they auto tune you? Melodyne. Auto tune. Whatever it Melodyne is. Melodyne auto tune. Yeah, what do you think about auto tuning? 
I'm not against it. I would do it. <laughs> so I'm yeah. not. I I'm not against it as long as you can rehearse and practice and match your studio recording when you perform it live. But a lot of people. That's don't. not going to happen for me. A lot of people don't. <laughs> a lot of people don't. A lot. A lot of people don't. And then, yeah. in which that case, there needs to be somewhat of a, a of a distinction within within the industry so that you don't run into instances of so of so you don't think that they're just doing it by f like it's fake or it's not really them yeah they're yeah and then we get into the whole cgi and the whole ai well that's because yeah. picasso topic, yeah. if you look at art yeah. if you look at picasso i mean he, every brush stroke meant something there yeah. was no auto tune. There was not a photocopy machine. <laughs> there no. was no fax machine. No. It was an actual painting. The reason why it's worth something. Yeah. So I don't understand why people have to get out, not sing the song, and then have a record playing in the background, and then they're just lip syncing. Yeah, that's and I get it because it's a live instrument so it could crack i mean it's not ever going to be in perfect condition you're traveling the country i get that but there has to be some sense of a way to be able to distinguish if you're if you're doing hardcore dancing mm -hmm. like like a britney or beyonce, beyonce i mean j-lo yeah. yeah then there then there's a level of of understanding mm -hmm. with 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 that um but when you're, if you're just like, if you're just, and in, in I know that she actually performs live, but if you're just like a Cher or like a Mariah, you, you yeah. need to be able to, and you're not, you're not exerting any energy and your, your heart's not like racing and you're not out of breath. Yeah. Honey, there Cher just has to stand there. Girl, <laughs> yeah. Cher, Cher can't do no but, wrong. But, there, but then that's, yeah. w that's when that, that principle applies. Got it. So. That's I believe. Will you the dance in your performance? I saw you dance. Yeah. The whole time on stage. Yeah. That's, she danced. That's, she <laughs> sang. That that's just that comes from years of doing it. <laughs> the best part at the Oscar gala was when the Oscar show came back on, and you were gyrating. And against you weren't the done stage. yet. Against the screen. You were dancing with them in the crowd. You're basically fucking the Oscars. I loved it. I thought it was great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought it was funny. Yeah. Uh, Want to do some hot topics with us? Oat with topics. So, oat topics. I call them hot topics. Hot topics. Paul calls them oat topics. Oat topics. Because, um, you know, he's got that designer Fuego voice. Fuego topics. Oat. So, we have a couple topics we want to just get your opinion on. Mm -hmm. We have two. You want to do one, Paul, and I'll do the second okay. one. Oh. Um. How come Beyonce no show at the CMT Awards? What do you think about that? Yeah. Because it's not real country music. <gasps> oh, it's not? Really? Why is it So Jolie? you don't like what she put out? Jolie. You don't like the, what is it called? Cal no, what, what is it? American, Car what, no, what the hell? Cowboy Carter? Cowboy Carter. Cowboy Carter. That's what she called it. I, I respect the creativity. Is it supposed to be country I, music? I she never said it was country. I don't personally agree with it. So you don't yeah. like the music? No. Why? You don't like the adaptation. I I just feel that there is a, another agenda why she got into country music. Okay. And I just feel like you need to stay in your own lane. Oh. What's her lane? Okay. Uh, well, what if she wants to express herself? But they're in saying a her album now? is like number. It's like mil. Like it's sold millions. I heard millions some of the songs and I kind of yes, like cause, them. Because it's Beyonce. Right. Yeah. <laughs> mm. But so. I like Beyonce. But here's the thing. I'm, I like all kinds of music, right? Mm -hmm. And for somebody who doesn't really like country, country, yeah, I listen to some, mm -hmm. but it's not my go-to. Yeah. But I, when I heard hers, I was like, "You go with your badass self." I enjoyed her yeah. interpretation. Yeah. And she said, "It's not a country album; it's a Beyonce album." Okay. And so when I'm listening to no, it, no, she said it's a country album. There she did. Yeah. <laughs> no, she said it's a, it's a Beyonce album. It's yeah. a Beyonce so, country album. So <laughs> when I'm hearing it, I enjoy how she took it in a different direction, sure. which made it very much hers. Now, is Jolene, because Dolly Parton wrote it and it's only been interpreted in country, but then Whitney Houston, when she did that other song, The Bodyguard, mm. that was country, but it wasn't 
a country version that they did. So does that make it still country? I don't know. I just feel Whitney had came from a, a pure place. Ah. Yeah. So you think Beyonce is just pure Had an agenda. Had wow. an agenda. Interesting. Well, God, I, I just picked the wrong one to talk yes, to you, you about. Yes, you did, babe. Jesus okay, Christ. I'm going to do another one, Hot Topic. Kiss sells their music catalog for over $300 million. Kiss. Kiss. K-I-S-S. Well, that's that's a lot of tongue action. <laughs> <laughs> right? Or is it K-I-I-S? Do you think that's selling out? What, what, what's when you out? sell your music catalog, like when an artist sells their music catalog, are they selling out? Why are they selling out? They're just partnering up with somebody else to be able to see what they're going to do moving forward because they're 90. <laughs> you need a yeah. younger generation to be able to come in and start doing things with your with your catalog to introduce it to a new generation. Yeah, it's it's an integration and it's sort of like an, an uh, a business venture and and um and they're not creative selling incorporation. Out their, yeah, they're not selling out their music. Yeah, they are. No, they're they not. They sold their music. But they're not selling out their music. It's still the same music it was before. But, but I think they can interpret it other it. ways too. And yeah, and they're going to update it to make it fresher and newer. Selling, uh, selling out to me is going against your moral practices and your and your so like you your core beliefs. So your core if beliefs. you, how many songs do you have right now? I have over. I have up, up to twenty songs right now. Okay, twenty songs. Yeah, so if you get like to a point where you've got hundreds songs. and hundreds of songs, you would never sell your cat your music catalog. I would have to see the the deal. Okay. So then it's for money for you too. If it's enough money, you would sell it. It's 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 capital. <laughs> <laughs> you see. Okay. It's capital. Okay, Beyonce. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, Beyonce. Wait a minute. Would you do a country song if they're going to pay you enough? Girl, she just said it's capital. <laughs> it's for for me, I just have different different approaches. Okay. And my and my approaches have have worked for me. Okay. So. So you would you're typically pop and, and dance, right? Is your two pop, categories? Pop and, and, and dance, yes. Okay. And and also jazz because I did a remake of Frank Sinatra's oh. Witchcraft. Okay. With Myra McKinley, who is Whitney Houston's musical director. Cool. And now the musical director for Earth, Wind and Fire. And this adaptation or, or this remake won the Hollywood Independent Music Award. Nice. And oh, so no hidden agendas there, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Doing jazz after <laughs> pop with someone like Wait Whitney a minute. Houston. She so did jazz, but she did win an award. I did yes. <laughs> and the reason why I did, I why I did jazz yeah. is because when I was living in Boca Raton, Florida, and I had, I had many restaurant gigs mm -hmm. i had to build my repertoire for the frank sinatra lovers and the great american songbook lovers because yeah, yeah. boca raton florida is notorious for um for you know retirees coming down from new york old retired rich all, people all retired rich people <laughs> that, that appreciate that that style of music that era, so yeah. i that. i had so when i was 15 16 i I had to build my repertoire yeah. and, and that's, okay. and that's been, that's been a part of my, my, my roots. I think that's what Beyonce was doing, building her repertoire because <laughs> she'd never done country and now she felt like she's done everything else. She could do country. <laughs> okay. We'll go with that. Well, just the fact that she can bank on it a <laughs> lot more than the rest of us. not agree. <laughs> well, I mean, honey, I sell out all day, every day, each day. <laughs> Girl, least, you give me the cash, I'm ready to do whatever. At least I'm being honest so that you yeah. know I'm, I come from a, tr a trustworthy place. Yeah, so absolutely. I'll, yeah. I'll never mislead you, yeah. which I don't, I, I don't want to be an, another. What's your sign, Kendra? I'm yeah, later. what's your sign? Leo. Oh. oh. She's a lioness. I got it. In his sheep's clothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our last part of our show, we're going to do a runway rundown. Runway so rundown. week, we pick out some outfits, and we're going to uh -oh. show them to you. Get oh. your opinion. I, I, hope Beyonce our opinion. Not, I hope Beyonce is not on the list. She probably is. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, no. She's coming see. for you, Kendra. So we call runway rundown the good, the bad. You know she listens to bad. our show. We call Runway Rundown the good, the bad, the ugly, or what the fuck were you thinking of when you were wearing this? Yeah, how were you? What were you <laughs> didn't you have a mirror in your house before you walked out of the house? Oh, my God. So the first one, Paul, <laughs> um, do you have the pictures? 
Runway Rundown, we call the good, the bad, the ugly, or what the fuck were you thinking of wearing? Um, we're going to show you three different outfits from three different celebrities, and we want to get your opinion. We're going to give you our opinion, and we're going to get your opinion. The first one I want to do is Dakota Fanning. Dakota oh. Fanning, she's in the new TV show series on Netflix, Ripley. And Which, she was also in the new Equalizer, too. Yes. Yeah. And I loved her in Ripley. She wore this to the premiere. I like Dakota. She's good. Um, she is good, a good actress, but a terrible dresser, or she needs to fire the stylist. Paul, explain the outfit, because it's a white She's wearing a white one-shoulder, <laughs> rippled, organza sheath dress that has... It, it, conceptually i think it's beautiful and i know what she was trying to do okay i think each layer was mimicking the poster of the movie that she's in so mm. it was a replication in a dress form for how the poster is and the theme of what it is kendra what do you think of it i think it needed to be in a different color i think it needed to have a little more structure to it you could have achieved the same kind of uh, feeling and direction with the layers yeah it's a gorgeous it's very expensive is it and it's done very well but i think she's such a petite such a beautiful framed young lady i feel like the dress she is wearing her yes what do you think Ken? let me see i also feel like she's being swallowed up by the dress yeah, yeah. she hates it <laughs> would you wear that dress no. Uh, <laughs> when you have a spelt figure, you want to be able to at least yeah. have it They're closer to the with, body with or proportions. And maybe like a, 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 a belt like mm -hmm. um, a belt like uh, feature. Um, and also I would accessorize it a little bit. more. But I think, I think she so. feels uncomfortable. She doesn't she 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 wants to be demure. And I think that's what she was going after. She's a beautiful girl. Though. She's a beautiful yeah. girl, She's but stunning. I absolutely hated this dress. I, it looks like a I white garbage go, bag. I would just go with tell us how you really more, feel. Um, <laughs> with, with more with things that accentuate her her features, like her eyes. Like I would not, I would not do like a white. I would just maybe do like a like a. a I think red. if it was in mm. a color, I think yeah. it would have showcased itself a lot more. Yeah, like like a like a deep red would be like. It would. Well, it would besides make her pop. Yeah. besides the color. I also think the fabric choice was the wrong choice. I know what the designer was going after, and it's done well, but I think if it was in a softer fabrication like chiffon, uh -huh. this is an organza, so it's got a little more structure to it. It looked if too it was, structured to me. If it was done in chiffon, I okay. think it would have glided off her body. Okay. The silhouette would have stood a lot better. So I've got a next one. Um, this no, is we start with the bad one. Jeez. Miley Cyrus at the Grammys. Um what was she wearing? I loved this. I, I don't know. Oh. I, you can describe it, Paul. It's it's gold. She's wearing a gold, gold chain link mesh in an Egyptian pattern. Yeah. And it's pants. It's not a skirt. It's pan And it's see-through. So the bust line and the private is the only thing that's about embroidered a little more. Mm -hmm. But her hair, her makeup context was very specific to what she was going after i think yeah. it's a total appropriate grammys look yeah that's I, what i loved about plus it. it's a performance look it's not yeah. a red carpet look and she's wearing her uh ballet slippers and she's standing on her tippy toes so it's yeah. about her performing mm -hmm. not about her walking a red carpet yeah when i saw that look i i actually i i very much was um appreciative of that yeah it's yeah. exciting Is that something you would wear yeah. Would you go something? Like, we wear something like that. Ab absolutely, because okay. Mi Miley and I have the have a similar similar figure. Mm -hmm. So when I saw that, I was like, "Oh, me too! <laughs> All three of us have the same figure." Oh my god! Um, I just won't look as sexy as both of you bitches. It's, isn't very, it? it's very Cleopatra like, yeah. Which, yeah. which I I'm on on board for. I loved. I, I think she was one of the best dressed at the Grammys. Well, I I, I don't know if this is a dress. This is a costume. Oh. There's a difference between a dress and there's a difference between performing in something. Explain. The performance Please. aspect of a dress is manipulated to show the creativity of the either the message that you're trying to send, the 
energy that you're trying to express, a new way of a w that people should be able to relate to what you're doing. So it evokes different kinds of emotions. When you're wearing a dress, a gown, it also evokes a message and feelings, but it's done in a different context. Got it. Okay. Um, so we all like it. I like it. I love yes. it. She's hot. Okay. Yeah. After she sat on that ball and she said naked. And Wrecking, she went back ball. And forth, yep. Wrecking ball. Wrecking ball. I said, honey girl, you got my attention. Yeah. Well, that, that phase. Who was else? Who else? <laughs> <laughs> that, that phase was to, to g give Disney an excuse to break with her because she wanted to be on her own. Oh, yeah, she but did. Is that so what it was? was? Amazing. It, yeah. Well, so put a big ball between your legs and there yes. you go. <laughs> Disney's out. There you go. Yeah. So the next one is Tilda Swinton. Oh. at ah. south by southwest okay i Tell usually that. think she's got an interesting and a beautiful like she wears like really avant-garde kind of interesting things avant-garde um but i really oui, oui. this oui. is a look that i'll let paul describe to everyone that's not watching but listening this is a look in my opinion is what the fuck were you thinking and why did you wear this so she's wearing a sweater Bad. that says charles jeffrey Loverboy. okay and it's it's striped it's striped it, it looks like one of those wool sweaters that you would have next to the fireplace when you're sitting in a cabin no i think it's an ugly christmas sweater that i would no that i would wear for it's, christmas if they said if they said i need you to wear an ugly christmas sweater I'd wear that sweater. But I'll tell you something. This sweater is a designer. Let me see designer. if we need to bring the Marzipan out. This <laughs> this sweater is, these, is a designer sweater done this. in very much of a context of a traditional tribal effect. The details that they've woven into and the colors that they've used translate to something that's a little more specific that maybe she understands. Maybe the purpose of what she was wearing it for relates to it. Kay. So it, it's teetering on the costumey side versus the red carpet side. But it's paired with a beautiful skirt. Like oh, my a, God. I hate that skirt. Like a tartan that is. But that skirt is but horrible. Let me tell you, it's like a suede. So do, that, do, lo that, lo that look works for her. her. Yeah. But it wouldn't work for me. Okay. But Do she you looks, like the look on her? I like the look on oh her because I think no. it makes sense, even with her hairstyle, oh God. even with the longer sleeves. I uh, don't. I I I would have to. I would eighty six it. Right? I hate it, Paul. This is a look that if you remember the TV, the the I would movie it. and the play Annie. Yeah. And they had the orphans, the poor orphans. Yeah. That's what they were wearing. The, yeah. Well, they were wearing that because they were donated that. And it came from all it's those families that donated. didn't want to wear that. It's a hard not wear for <laughs> us. <laughs> it's awful. I th Listen, for the normal person, it's awful. But when you look at the design elements that's infused in there and her personality that she can wear this, okay. it's not for everybody. There's a specific message that she's trying to convey, and she did a really good job in pairing them together and look stylish in it instead of looking like a frumpy old lady that took it out of the closet. From I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Paul. I always agree with you. I disagree with you 100%. This is the worst look I've seen her in. I can tell you, she shouldn't be wearing those I shoes. Did, with I just it. hope, like, was it was it cold? Because I don't want her sweating her ass off and, and that. <laughs> yeah, I don't like think it so. in like, Texas. In yeah. se oh. South by Southwest. It must Texas. have been hot. It must. It must have been hot. Yeah. yeah. But it's awful. Did you like it, Kendra? I mean, that that's that sweater is appropriate for going to the ski the lodge no. after Aspen. after skiing mm. and and so what's the message, Charles Jeffrey Loverboy? He wants his sweater back. <laughs> <laughs> okay patrick <laughs> he wants a sweater back i'm sorry i don't i didn't like it i didn't like it yeah i didn't like it either okay no i like it i like it for her now i don't think anybody else could have worn that but i like it for her okay i don't think anybody else would want to wear that <laughs> i don't think they would look quite <laughs> as good in it the way she did yeah. But she's very it androgynous. Yes. It, wor it works for Tilda. Yeah. I mean, she's very androgynous. I mean, you don't know if she's a girl. You don't know if she's a boy. You don't know if she's <laughs> masculine energy. You don't know if she's feminine energy. You don't know anything. She, uh, she, she, he, she sort of her, ambiguous. him, yeah. he, yeah. I hate it on anybody. Sorry. 
God, I was going to wear that outfit today. I'm Thank very God passionate about it. this look. I fucking hate it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> okay, mister. All right, Miss Kendra, tell our audience where we can find you before we wrap. You can find me on Instagram at Kendra Erica, also on Facebook at Kendra Erica Music. And you can go to my website, www.kendraerica.com, and just Google me. <laughs> I love it. Oh, just Google me. Yeah. I've never said that. I'll put that on a t-shirt. Just, just Google, Google me, me bitch. Just Google me, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You're going to end the show, Paul. I thought you were going to say what you're going to say for us. That you're always, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. You've been okay, so you have just been undressed by Paul and Patrick. How do you I, feel? I feel bare. <laughs> I like that. I feel bare. And really? On, on that I, note, everybody sign up for <laughs> P-O-L-A-T-T-E-U.com, Coffee Reads, and we'll see you next time for another great episode of Undress with Paul and Patrick and Little Snow White 90210. Bye, undressed bitches. Bye. Love you all. This podcast is brought to you by Herdat Media and American Media Television. Executive producers are Patrick Simpson, Pola Two, and Pat Safford. Produced by Jordan Hill and Sarah Silicula. Shooting and editing by Jordan Hill. Music and theme song, Undressed, written and performed by Lionel Cohen, courtesy of DNA Productions. Artwork by Dominique Demetz. And hosted by Pola Two, Patrick Simpson, and Little Snow White 90210. Remember to follow at Pola2 and at Patrick Simpson and at Snow White 90210 and watch Gown and Out in Beverly Hills on Prime Video. And don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an episode.